Hello, it is Thursday, April 18th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday crossword, which means we're going to be solving an interesting theme of some sort. I'm always curious to see what's going on on Thursday. And uh, somewhat like yesterday, I don't have a huge amount of time to solve this today. Uh, I don't have, I'm not as pressed for time as yesterday, but might be trying to solve this slightly more quickly than a typical Thursday puzzle. We'll see if that uh, we'll see if that's possible. Sometimes that's not up to me. In any case, today's edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Michael, Aaron Spiller, Lake House Bros, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster. Thank you so much to those four. They're benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and they keep this channel going. They sustain this series. I'm very grateful to them for that. Thank you to those four. Thanks to everybody who's a patron of the channel for your help in keeping this channel alive. And if you'd like to do that yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link where you'll find all of the bonus videos available to patrons. Thanks to everybody who's done so. And thanks if you've subscribed to the channel on YouTube as well. That is also a big help. Um, all right, let's get on to the crossword by David Kwong, who has constructed a couple of dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It's a Thursday crossword, so like I say, there will be something interesting to the theme. And it was edited once again by Joel Faliano. Let's start solving and see what's in store. It might come in a package. Uh, that's pretty open-ended, isn't it? Let's see. Great creatures. Great apes, probably. Let's see. Um, aid package. You, can have an, uh, you could have an aid package delivering sort of food and supplies and things. Let's look at this. It follows the Hijri calendar, Islam. There we go. And Sabertooth Tiger in the Ice Age movies. I've actually never seen these. I have not a clue what this is, what this name is. I assume it's a name. Uh, measure of inflation in brief. Okay, well, this doesn't mean inflation in an economic sense, at least doesn't seem to be based on the, the fill, uh, but rather inflation of, say, a tire could be uh, pounds per square inch is a measure of uh, air pressure. And saber to oh right, I looked at that, I don't know the answer. A lot time. No, why did I read it like that? <laughs> to a lot time. To a lot time to to deal out to ration time, maybe. Um and it there's an asterisk, which means it's probably well, it's definitely a theme related clue, but I don't know in what manner. Let's look at this one. Account that's been overdrawn, question mark. A saga in the sense that an account could be a tale, a story that you're telling. And if you've sort of drawn out the story at great length or overdrawn it in this punny sense, it's a, it could be a very long story, which a saga is. So I think that might be the answer. That makes this look like Diego. I mean, it could be Dingo, but that's the name of a different animal. I think that's less likely. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let's put that in and see if it helps. Oh, but this is also a theme clue, of course. Acre on the ocean floor. Naker, maybe? Maybe we're missing an N? Does that do anything here? Yeah, that could be missing a letter. Mallet time or something like that. Ballot. Oh, ballot time. Election day. Right. Okay, so we're missing... Here we're missing a letter. Um, B, and we're making ballot time. Here, I think, probably, because we could spell nacre um, on the ocean floor, something like mollusk or, or something. Mollusk shell? No. Oh, wait, did I? No, I think I spelled that right. Well, it could be shells, plural. I don't know if this is the answer. It feels like a plausible answer if the clue is indeed nacre on the ocean floor, but I'm, and I suspect it is. Let's see. Musical with Rum Tum Tugger and Mongo Jerry. That's cats. Those are cats. Okay. Well, this, that's not the answer here then. Um, oh, Mother of Pearl. Mother of Pearl is another name for nacre. So there we go. That is indeed uh, the answer. Okay. Well, that's, that's what the theme is then. So we have B and then we have N. Okay. I was wondering if maybe we're spelling something, but B and don't feel likely as the first two letters of a word or phrase. So, hmm. Okay, we'll keep going. 
summer setting in SF. So uh, I assume this means uh, summertime time zone clock setting in San Francisco, which would be Pacific daylight time as opposed to Pacific standard time. Showy accessories on marching band uniforms. Um, sashes or medals or something? I'm not sure. Bloomers worn around one's head. So a lay you could wear. Uh, I assume when it says around head, it doesn't mean on your head, but more you put it on over your head, onto your neck. So a flower garland, a lay. Visitor from a faraway place. Um, not sure about that one. Showy accessories. Oh, right. Showy accessories. Right. What is that? I still don't know. Big mouth. A maw is a word for a big gaping mouth. Anime blang. Hollywood's for... <laughs> blang. That's a strange way to say that. Blank. Anime blank. Hollywood's first Chinese-American film celebrity. Oh, um, uh, I do, ah, uh, I do know this person, but I can't think of her name. Um, I mean... The most obvious guesses would be Wang or Wong. I think probably Wong, anime Wong. That does sound familiar. I've definitely at least, I don't know if I've seen her in films, but I've certainly at least seen publicity photos and things. Uh, Money Maven for short. Do I think that O is correct? Yeah, probably, because it could be CFO, Chief Financial financial Officer of a, um, of a company, you know, large company, maybe. I guess it doesn't need to be large. Anyway, assist in a foursome. Oh, no, 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 no. It's that same thing where we're missing a letter. Right, okay. Starting with MC is strange, though. Bassist in a foursome. That would make sense. In a four-person band. Um... Oh, McCartney, Paul McCartney, the bassist for the Beatles, of course. Right, there we go. Okay, great. There we have it. Um, the False Good Samaritan, e.g. A con? A, I, I guess, I mean, I don't know this phrase specifically, but presumably it means somebody who, you know, is acting as though they're going to assist you in trouble, but in fact they're going to defraud you in some way. One way to run. You could run afoul of the law, say. So that could be the answer. And then here we have month without a federal holiday. So this will be a month without a U.S. federal holiday, which I guess is the month of August. All right. Athlete with the only vertically mounted marker on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So his holy name is not walked upon. Oh, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, Ali, Muhammad Ali, presumably. Okay. It'll all shake out. Uh, molt? Like animals molting? I'm not sure that's right. That PM would look stranger. No, I don't think it's right. Oh, silt? Like, silt? Salt. Oh, it, uh, no, it is salt. A salt shaker, of course. Okay. That makes much more sense than any of my other guesses. Okay. So roguish sorts are scamps, maybe. Sort of roguish folks. Um, you know, people who are a bit mischievous. Naturally competitive. Could, oh, type A personality is naturally competitive. Um, delightful diversion could be a romp, maybe. That would be a way to describe a, a romp, delightful diversion. Alice with a Nobel Prize in Literature. Alice Munro um, won the Nobel Prize in Literature seven, several, I don't know, I, I don't know if it was seven, several years ago is what I meant to say. Um, and a truly great author. I think I've read most of her books. They're short, they're, I think, all short story collections. I can't can't remember if she's written any novels. Maybe one, but essentially she's written almost exclusively in the short story form and a truly great writer. Anyway, showy accessories on marching band uniforms. Plumes. Uh, there we go. Visitor from a faraway place, a UFO, an unidentified flying object, and uh, something bygone could be defunct. It's Obsolete, outdated, it's gone. Words before time or story. End of time, end of story are both phrases. All right. Menu fish. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Sorry. Winter frost. Um, this is probably hoar, H-O-A-R. So you could describe a sort of hoary scene as having rhyme, rhyme, R-I-M-E, frost, kind of around it. It's fairly... I would say 
slightly archaic or quaint word at this point, but uh, but there you have it. Four grades K to 12. Oh, this is an abbreviation I've seen occasionally. L high for elementary and high school grades. I don't usually think of kindergarten as being included in that in the U.S. school system, but maybe maybe it is. I don't know. I guess this. I guess this is. I don't trust my knowledge about this, but I think I think this is probably the answer. Menu fish. Soul. Okay. Why is that menu? Is that because this fish has another name, sort of biologically? That whereas soul is culinary, it's sort of culinary name. I'm not really sure, but I think it must be the answer. Superman portrayer, uh, Reeve, Christopher Reeve famously portrayed Superman in film. And one way to come out would be to come out ahead. Sight C question mark. Um, not really sure. Name that's an anagram, anagram of bread. Deborah. Um, often, you often see Deborah with an H on the end, but I've seen it both ways, so I think that's probably right. Ice is found on it. Nice is found on it on the Riviera. There we go. Um, nice. I'm very predisposed to thinking about uh, Nice when it comes to France because uh, in cryptic crossword clues, Nice is very frequently cryptically used as a way to represent France because it's often written in such a way that it seems as though it's the English word nice. And it's not, you don't realize that it's that it's referring to the French city Nice. So anyway, that I'm very <laughs> I'm inclined to immediately jump to that. Uh, in any case, uh, it's not ice is found on it. It's Nice is found on the Riviera. And there we go. So a geographical clue rather than uh, something relating to climate. And sightsee question mark. Aim, right, to take aim uh, would be sort of to sight see, I suppose, to kind of get someone in your sights to take aim. And then a fireplace bit would be an ember. So the embers of the, the fire. Attachment to a bit, a rein, so it would be attached to the to bit that a, that a horse you know, has in its mouth. And director Johnson, Ryan Johnson, is the director of films like Brick and Knives Out and so on. And his name is spelled in this, um, I don't know, I guess sort of more Irish uh, manner. And then Graceful Horse um, and, oh, Arab. Arab horses are, are said to be quite, you know, graceful and fast and and uh, beautiful, I guess. I don't know very much about horses, but uh, I've heard that generally. Uh, here we have Thrice, re oh, right, this will be part of the theme. Thrice remade movie, or when parsed as six words, a hint to the theme clues in this puzzle. Right, okay. Thrice remade. Does that mean there are four total versions of this film? Um, I can't think what that is offhand. That's interesting. I think Heaven Can Wait has been remade several times. What else has been remade many times? I don't know. That's a, that's that's a lot of times. It's an unusually high number of remakes. Um, anyway, let's let's solve the other bits. Aware of. If you're aware of something, you're sort of in on it. And an animal whose name, when capitalized, is a major West African language. Um, I'm annoyed that I can't get this immediately. If you're beholden to, to be beholden to someone is to owe them, and owe you. But it's probably not pronounced that way as the West African language. Iwe or something? Oh, I'm embarrassed that I don't know that. Okay, clear. Oh, to clear as a verb. To net a certain amount of money would be to clear that amount of money. And then, that being said, you could say yet, but nonetheless, still. Word commonly used in mid-century modern furniture. Um, oak or you or... I'm not sure offhand. Don't blank. Oh, well, this could be don't ask, and then this could be ash. I suppose ash is probably used in mid-century modern furniture. That sounds plausible. Need some water one moment. Okay, half half of dodici. Um, I don't know this. Uh, this is Italian, I assume, not number. 
limitless quantity. Um, a C. A C of something would be an enormous quantity of it. Uh, a scent stage for a bird, probably nascent stage for a bird. So an early uh, stage of life, I would think. Um, not sure. Things to piece together. Kits. You could piece together a, you could construct a kit with different um, components. Okay, so that's say. Okay, well, there we go. I, uh, I did not know that. <laughs> okay, and, oh, oh no, this, I see, I thought, that, I thought it was this Thrice Remade movie, but it's just also highlighting that one. Okay, so what's the na presumably nascent stage for a bird? What is that? Um, I don't know. Okay, well, that's annoying. Days leading up to the next sign in astrology. Absolutely no clue. Eve, I don't know at all. Seek retribution in a way. To sue someone would be to seek retribution for damages of some sort. Uh, small brawl could be a melee, maybe, or it's not necessarily small. What's a small brawl? A, a scuff or a... Yeah. That feels more small than a melee. Let's see. What about this? Days leading up to the next sign in astrology. Um... Yeah, I just don't know that. Joint, so to speak. So to speak. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, right, here's one of these. Ovid of Greek mythology. Oh, that's pretty clever. Um, oh. It's not COVID, is it? That would, that would be very surprising. I'm just wondering because we used Greek letters for different COVID variants, and I was wondering if that somehow was relevant, but it doesn't really have anything to do with mythology. I don't think that's the case. Um, Bovid. Bovid, the something bull. Oh, this will be, this is sort of vaguely familiar, but I can't think what it is. Is uh, Let's see if this is actually likely to be right. It could be wrong. Deadened, uh, uh, null, numb. If your arm is deadened, it's numb. Roundup sounds. I'm not really sure. Devices with shuttles. Looms uh, for weaving. A shuttle is a sort of component of a loom. Peter of 1934 is the man who knew too much. Peter Lorre. Uh, there we go. Classic film actor. Oh, roundup sounds are moos. So if you're rounding up cows, they could be mooing. Crossfit? Question mark. I don't know. Hospital scan. An MRI. A magnetic resonance imagery. And then... Not wavering is set still. Crossfit question mark. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, right. And here's our thrice remade movie. Oh, was I looking at the wrong? I can't remember. I might have been looking. I think I was looking at the wrong clue when I read this before. I think I was looking at this. The Ovid of Greek mythology. Whoops. Okay. Well, whoops. Anyway, thrice remade movie. Okay. Oh, A Star is Born. That, I think, is the movie I was thinking of, not Heaven Can Wait. I think Heaven Can Wait was remade once. I think A Star is Born is the movie I was trying to think of that's been remade uh, a huge number of times. Uh, three times, I guess. Anyway, there it is. That's the film. Okay, great. So when parsed as six words, a hint to the theme clues in this puzzle. As ta re s b no. What does that mean? When parsed as six words. Okay, so this one was missing B. This one was missing also B. Okay. This was missing N. Okay, I don't think I understand what I'm looking at here. Oh, this was also N. Two Bs, two Ns, three Ns. Two Bs, three Ns. Oh, three B's and three N's. Uh, oh, <laughs> A star is B or N. That's incredibly good. That's completely absurd in a, in a way that I really enjoy. 
Okay, very good. <laughs> a star is B or N, right? Okay, so this this certainly is a bovid of Greek mythology. There we go. All right, excellent. Very good. What an absurd theme. Gradually slower in music. RIT for ritardando, which is a gradual slowing musically. Suffered with suffix with coward, cowardice. And heavy hearted could be sad, I suppose. Like some coding loops and measuring cups. Nested. You could have nested measuring cups, and then also in programming, you could nest uh, loops that perform operations. Faddish 1990s disc. A pog. Wow, I remember those um, from when I was growing up. Um, they were used. I don't even remember really how the game worked, but they were used in some kind of these little little discs about that big, and they were used in some kind of schoolyard game. Yesterday. I don't know. 2020 Olympics site. Uh, Tokyo, I think. And then I think it was delayed a year. Um, Ovid of... Oh, right, right, right. The... Oh, the something bull. It, it's infuriating that I can't remember what this actually is. But what about this? Oh, hatchling. Hatchling is the nascent stage for a bird. Okay, so I was right about what the clue is actually. And then days leading up to the next sign in astrology. Still doesn't mean anything to me, unfortunately. Small brawl. Okay, I none of my ideas before are correct. Um, don't know. Cusp, maybe the days leading up. Oh, scrap. Oh, th that could be it. Yeah. So this could be cusp, and then joint, so to speak. Um. Oh, prison. Yeah, joint is slang for prison. There we go. The. Cretan bull. Why did I put an I here? Was that based on anything? Oh, because I thought it was going to be the something Ian bull. That was a very silly, that was uh, much too presumptuous. There we go. The Cretan bull. Perfume name with an accent. Este is an Este Lauder, the eponymous uh, cosmetician. And then, or businesswoman, I guess. And then milk sources. Um, oh, teats, as in of a cow. And then, um, so not a bull, for instance. But here we have greet the day, rise to greet the day. And then here we have Horace's Ars Poetica. There we go. Great. So we have some more from the classical world in the puzzle. And then first name in objectivism. Oh, Ayn Rand, the um, author who wrote various obje uh, you know, objectivism-laced novels. Like Atlas shrugged. And then here you have, you might need a lift to do this. A ski. You need a ski lift to get up the mountain. And then Verizon sale of 2021. No idea. Oh, AOL. Boy, I didn't even remember that they owned AOL, let alone sold them. Okay. Well, I guess that's right. Yesterday. Oh, ASAP. I need this yesterday. I need this immediately. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Okay, well, it wasn't a particularly quick solve, but but nonetheless, there we did, there we have it. We got through this very clever puzzle. I really enjoyed that theme, so I I, I caught on to this bit fairly early, thanks to uh, Acre becoming Nacre. Um, that was helpful, um, but it took me. I mean, it was a well constructed theme because it took quite a while to get to get to the end. Um, I'm a little bit annoyed at myself for not landing on a star is born the film earlier because that definitely was the film that I was trying to somehow recollect in my mind as having a, an uncommon number of remakes, but we got there eventually. And then finally realizing <laughs> after counting the missing letters uh, that this reads a star is B or N was an incredibly enjoyable moment. So well done to David Kwong. That was incredibly clever. And there we have it. That was the Thursday crossword. Hope you enjoyed. I'll be back tomorrow for a Friday themeless puzzle. Do join me then. Uh, but until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.